Thank you very much. I, I, I should first say that I really appreciate all of you having come out this evening on what is looking like being another really nasty storm for us. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, it's, it's really reassuring to see so many faces in, in this courtroom when we do a history talk, and especially so many familiar ones to me. I, I think I know most of you. I don't remember all your names, but I certainly know the faces, and that's reassuring to know that old friends are here to support us. Um, there are a number of things I was thinking about saying in an editorial fashion before I got started, but before I do that, if I even do it at all, I promised that I would tell you that, and there are copies of this flyer out in the lobby, courthouse lobby, about the Independent Railroaders April annual auction night. Um, and the details are here for those of you who know about it and have done it before, or for anybody who has not, there are some instructions about how to go about taking part in this event. Friday, April 19th, in Jamestown at the First Lutheran Church. Dave Shaw and Ray Getz are the contact people, but there are copies of this out there. Do you want this one? You better keep okay. keep that. You may have a real flood of inquiries. And, I hope so. Yeah. Anything any of you or any of us can do to support railroading in this country, whether it's at the model level or the big stuff, is very useful. We really need to, I, I can't believe, now I wasn't going to get into this, but I am. I'm going to change my mind because it follows right on the heels of this point I just made. And Mr. Randy John was here, Dr. Randy John from the Seneca Nation a week or so ago, talking about something that was very important to many of us in this county uh, when the dam was first mentioned as a possible, actually that was mentioned decades and decades ago before some of us were even born. But there was another plan, and that was to bring slack water to the upper Allegheny River north of East Brady, where the last, or first if you're going downstream, the first lock and dam are located. And somehow in, in the uh, intervening months and years, when all this information started to be compiled and, and um, people were becoming interested in what might be able to be done if we were to build a flood control dam, that other stuff got forgotten. There was a group called the Allegheny River Improvement Association, and it had an upper Allegheny River branch. And many of those men who ran that organization strictly as volunteers and tried to push Slackwater through were from Warren. And everything happened in a real rush in 1956 during the flood. So anyway, uh, Dr. John's talk was very much about what happened to his people when that dam was built. It's not a pretty story. I just wanted to bring this up because he didn't mention it. There was an alternative, and I, I, you can take that as you wish. Each of us has his own take on this whole situation. We do have a beautiful lake and some wonderful amenities attached to it today. But there was another alternative. It's worth remembering. Okay. Um, now, I, I need to publish a disclaimer here. Can you all hear me all right? I can hear myself too well. Uh, I, I want to apologize for the quality of some of the slides you're going to see. A lot of them were copy slides that I made, and they're rather dark, uh, some of them. But on the other hand, I've left them in this tray, and I've used this talk for years now, probably 20 at least. I've left them in because they depict the mood of what it is we're talking about tonight, and that's our vanished railroad depot. Depose. Uh, 
Some years ago, I published an article in Stepping Stones. This is the January 1977 issue in which there's a picture article about depots, and you'll see some of those photos tonight. So that's available if you're interested in going a little farther with this. Uh, I was handed, having heard about this, an article from the Jamestown Post Journal about the guy who's working on the New York Central Station in Jamestown. How many of you know about that? Anybody? Some, that's good. <clears throat> it's being reconditioned to a fairly well. And it's worth uh, watching its progress. I know there are a couple of gentlemen here tonight, at least I think they are, who I met uh, several weeks ago over at the office next door, who are researchers on the Dunkirk, Allegheny Valley, and Pittsburgh Railroad. Are you, are you here? You, you? There they are. Oh, oh, there's three of them. I knew there was a third one. Thank you for coming. Welcome. And if I, if I say anything that doesn't agree with your, your data, just, just, no, don't tell them, don't tell them. <laughs> Not unless it's earth shaking. Um, <clears throat> well, my, my, well, I know, one more disclaimer. Like most of us, I'm aging. And funny things are happening to my memory. And I don't know what to do about it. I don't think there's anything I can do about it. But it's, it's annoying to a historian to forget things. Especially if, if, if he knew he was right about them. I don't claim to be right about everything, but I, I had a pretty good handle on this, on this topic. But I'm forgetting a lot of it. So don't, don't mind if I miss here and there. And if you notice a, a correction that you really can't resist making, just shout it out. No time to talk. Just give me the correction. That's all the time there is. <laughs> all right. Well, I, what did I do with my... Uh, here it is. I guess we don't need that any longer. Can you all... You, you can see this all right. We don't need to deaden the lights, I think, do we? Well, the, the famous Dolly Varden, uh, as far as I know, named only because the initials had a certain ring to them and fit, kind of fit the Dunkirk, Allegheny Valley, and Pittsburgh Railway name, is the first one we're going to look at. Um, does that seem focused out there? No. No. It's always something. Change it again? Nope. All right? Yep. If you walk up here, by the way, <laughs> be very, very careful. You might want to come up later and see these uh, models. <coughs> I asked Shelley to bring these over because uh, when, I, when I first got really uh, immersed in depot history, I decided to I was interested in HO modeling, and, and I was not anywhere near expert at that, and finally just put it aside. But I loved making models, so I did it several depots, and these are two of them. Russell has lost its chimney. I don't know where that got to, but there was a chimney. This is the Russell Depot as, as it looked originally. It was enlarged later in life, about another third, as, a third again as long. This is the much lamented DAV depot from Warren. And you're going to see pictures of that, plenty of them. And I'll talk about that as we go. Do you recognize this scene? It's right here in Warren County. Come on. Right. This is Akeley. You're looking, you're looking at the village of Akeley from the, the uh, north of Russell side of the creek. The bridge is in the same position, roughly the same position it was in. Streetcars were running up the other side of the creek at this time. That's when I'm about to cross the bridge. The depot is right down here. You can just barely see it. It's a hip roof building, and you'll see some pictures of it. And right here, and, and this, 
This building has been turned into a little house. It's the first building on the left after you cross the bridge. There's a, an open space, a deep field where floods usually take over. First building is the old streetcar waiting room. Still there. It's been enlarged. I see some knowledgeable nods out here, so you must know something about that building. It's still there. It looks nice. The depot is another story. Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> here we are looking north up the tracks into town. Here's the railroad station right here. Keep an eye on that. Right up by the tracks. Today, the uh, building that Dick Gage owned and made, and still owned, the cement block building, is right here. Quite a little village, Inkley was. There's the depot in its original position along the tracks. In this picture, I've got too much paper here. There's too many things to look at. I, and see, I can't remember. Let's see. This is about 1950. This picture was taken by Carlton Gay. I don't know how many of you remember, certainly some of you do, Carlton Gay's meat market on the corner, near the corner of 5th and East Street. He lived on the corner in a big house. He was a consummate railroad historian. He traveled all over this part of the country photographing, followed all the railroads. And he had an enormous collection of albums which now reside next door, remarkable collection, but he took lots of photographs in Warren County. I suppose this is a watchman's shack right next to it. Today, however, the depot is still there, but it's not in the same place. So next time you drive through Akeley, let's say you're crossing the bridge and heading east, and you'll come to that nice little house that was the streetcar waiting room, that'll be there's no good trying to do it that way. I'll get dizzy. Um, <clears throat> look out behind that cement block building. The depot is there. Hip proof. It's still there in all its glory with a shed attached to the side of it. So uh, at least it's not beautiful, but at least it's there. And I haven't been in it for a good many years. It's been back there for quite a while. I don't know who moved it actually. And it still is, it was inside, still very original. I mean, the in, interior woodwork in the ceiling and so forth. Well, here we are at Russell. Um, Russell was built in 1874. In 1900, it was enlarged. This is, a, this is, a, this is, a, this is a, the depot before the enlargement on this end, to be the south end. And it stood, I have to check these dates, 1960. Pat Ferry, and most of you know about Pat, who ran a, a grocery store and a meat market in Russell, bought the depot, dismantled it, and carted most of the lumber, if not all, up to his farm on Fox Hill. And he built a chicken coop out of some of the lumber from that depot and used some of the windows as well. I, I think this was an especially nice uniform little depot. They were all different. I don't think there were any any duplicated either on the P and E or on the D A V. Here it is in its longer form. And there's the model. I remember that building very well, and of course I remember the trains before the changeover to Conrail, long before, still running north through Warren, right out here through the block and, and up north out of town. Many of you remember that. <clears throat> you recognize this? Oh, come on. Yeah, North Warren. One of the, one of the survivors, isn't it remarkable? that this building still stands where it always stood. It's still there, it's still being used, and it's still reasonably original. Certainly, uh, the exterior is. Brackets are all still there. It's a fine example 
of uh, frame, early frame, typical small town railroad station. And all they all had their stations. Uh, that, <laughs> I don't know whether you can see any detail there or not. Probably not. If the lights were off, we could. But I, I took this picture because it was so gloomy. I really, I really wanted something that represented the fate of most of our depots. And this certainly did. It's so gloomy that you can hardly make out anything at all. But there, if, the, if the lights were down, you'd see some detail. Trouble is, this does represent the life of depots generally. It's a dark story. Okay, here we are in Warren, and this is the, the DAV depot, the second depot, built to replace one at the other end of the block on 4th Avenue. Th this stood uh, right across from the old Anderson Bakery building, where those huge towers and things are now that are part of a whirly, isn't it? Yeah. Um, the, actually, uh, to the best of our knowledge, the original passenger station still exists. At the other end of the block, there's a long freight building. The east end of that building, part of it, was the original passenger station on the DAV in downtown Warren. So it's still encased in that longer building. And this, this was built in 1893, and it was raised in 1937. But isn't that a nice building? Here it is over here, the model. Very unusual. Stunner. There it is. And there it is again. I love that building. Um, what do we have here? Uh, this is the last doodle bug come through Warren in 1937. And the doodle bugs familiarly called were the trains that, the last train units that ran on a north out of Warren on the DAV. And they were kind of a combined passenger freight operation, usually just a, uh, what do you call that combi combination locomotive something? Is there a name for that? What? Well, it's gas electric, yeah, but is there a name for that type of combine? combine. Okay, I, I'm not too good with my terminology uh, after it gets beyond the architectural part of things. The mail, too. The mail, absolutely. Mail, mail train, yeah. Oh, there's a lot I'm not telling you that I probably could because either I don't remember it or more likely I don't know it. So you can fill in the blanks for yourselves as you go along. Otherwise, we'd be here all night with questions and extrapolations and whatnot. Um, this is the building I was just talking about. And again, I apologize for the quality of the picture, but that is the freight building. And I, I don't know who owns it now. Where do they own it? It's at the extreme west end of, of that block on which that monster tower affairs rears up where the old, deep, the newer depot was. So it's this end, perhaps this much of it, that was the original, we're told, and no reason not to believe it, the original DAV passenger station in Warren. It would have been quite small, of course. <laughs> there it is from the other end. <clears throat> this, this building, I'm not even sure this still stands. It was right across the street. And this was a New York Central freight office in the 60s, still. Is it still there? Okay, I, had, I haven't, I guess so depressed when I drive down that block that I don't very often look, look on that side of the street. I'm looking for those depots across the street. What do we have here? This looks like uh, Garland? Youngsville, of course, sorry. This picture was taken about 1950. This is another Carlton Gay photograph. Isn't that wonderful? Perfect. Absolutely perfect. And those that had a, a uh, pitch section in the front like that were really pretty special. They were all different. Uh, this is, t this is um, 
Oh, this is, these are the passengers on their last run on the DAV at the Youngsville Depot, and I don't have any idea, of course, who they are. I can't even see them. Can you? <laughs> Not very well. Okay. <clears throat> I used to be able to do this without looking at my notes, but I cannot, I can't do it anymore. I just don't. This is Garland. Well, I was close. 1918. Um, Garland burned in 1960. Lost a fire. Again, another really nice style, different from anything we are seeing so far. Now, I, I, don't, I honestly don't know whether this building still exists, but this is on Urban Run, or was. It's an old DAV coach that was turned into a camp. Anybody know? Not there anymore. It was in pretty tough shape when I took this picture, and, and that would have been, that was in 76. So it probably just fell apart, carried away. Okay. <clears throat> well, there's a lot more to this story, and the gents I was telling you about earlier are working uh, on the DAV particularly, I guess. And so there are lots of folks out there who love this subject and know an awful lot about it. So it's not hard to get information if you need it. This is, for me, it was just a, 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 an exercise in, well, as it turns out, perhaps in futility, I don't know, but it was an exercise that I enjoyed, I still do. I, I love railroad architecture, and I like riding the trains. You can still do it. Okay, now we're going to start up on the, the old P&E, what most of us know more familiarly as the Pennsylvania Railroad. <coughs> Sheffield. Still there. Yes, it is. Without its cupola. Well, we the there you are. Well, I knew there'd be somebody here from. Yep. Right. The, the railroad, <laughs> when I get to Warren, I'll talk a little bit about that problem. Uh, I don't know what it is, but the railroads are notoriously uncooperative. Here we are in Sheffield. This would be uh, about 1907. That's the freight depot. This is probably 49 or 50, and this is another Carlton Gay picture, Sheffield. Things are a little different, 1975. Getting gloomier all the time, but it doesn't look like that now. This is 1976. And again, I apologize for the quality of the picture, but I, I just can't take them out I can't, because they're so demonstrative. They're so representative of the, the general picture uh, for railroad depots in this country that, that we, we should be reminded of what we've lost, what we've destroyed. Anybody recognize this little fella? Down the line a little farther, we're going east out of town. Hmm? No? It's Tyona. I used to be able to go down there, it is again, and go down there and point exactly to the spot where it was. I don't know as I could do that anymore. I don't remember the name of the, the street here that turns off six down, crosses the track, tracks. Cherry Grove. Hmm? Cherry Grove. Now this, <coughs> now this is a street in Tyona that turn, you turn right off Route 6. I think it's Front Street. Front Street? It's just not far, the tracks aren't far from the uh, highway. Right. You made a right turn and there it was right down on, the, on that intersection. Um, all right, now, moving right along. Anybody recognize that? Yes, good. See, there's some experts in this crowd. Of 
1895. <coughs> that observation tower, or so-called, on the roof was not an unusual feature. That was often a, a part of a country default. It gave the fellers in the building a good view up and down the tracks, ordinarily. That was probably about 1895. This is a, I like this picture because it's alive. It's about 1908, train uh, passing through Clarendon. How many of you, <clears throat> it's going to be most of you, how many of you remember, wherever you were, but especially in Warren County, walking out by the tracks and watching a huge steam locomotive? Not as many as I thought, but uh, a very impressive sight. Oh, we're, oh, we're still in Clarendon. Things are beginning to look pretty grim. Most of you will remember where this depot sat. Again, it was roughly in the same, di well, it was the same distance from the highway as the town, and would have been uh, just a turn to the right out of town, and there it was. And there it is at the end. This one was taken in 1976. That was pretty nearly the end of that building. <clears throat> this is sad, isn't it? You're really taking pictures. <laughs> My daughter is filming this. <laughs> And I try not to think about that. Actually, I'm just filming the screen and not so much you. Oh, so good. It's okay. Yeah. Good. I zoomed in on the screen. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is the Ots Tower in Warren on, over on the uh, south side. You don't very often see a railroad tower anymore in this part of the world. But these things were, they stood well beyond their ordinary lifetime, and they were perhaps the single most important buildings on the lines because it was out of these that the instructions were given to the railroad men and what to do when and how to avoid collisions and so on. They were really a remarkable piece of uh, uh, architectural history, as, as were the stations. That's a really interesting and nice looking building, even in its declining years. I don't hear anybody disagreeing with me, so I hope I'm on the right track. It's a sad story. No way getting around it. Um, now, we're taking a slight turn to the rear. <coughs> Most people probably don't even know that this bridge existed, but this is covered railroad bridge in Warren. And it was built in the 1870s. There, this, I think this is the only picture I know of that bridge in its entirety. And you're looking at it from the south side, and there in the background is the, the brick station, which we're eventually coming to. That look more familiar? This is about 1907. This building was enlarged slightly too. The, the overhangs were extended and, and it was made, it was surrounded by overhangs on the lower level. So that was not, that wasn't an original feature. It got a little bit larger. 1974, and things are looking pretty, pretty grim. This was built in 1868 and 69, by the way, and enlarged slightly after 1900. There's the bridge that replaced, the second bridge to replace the covered bridge. I'm sure you're all familiar with that curve down by the station, which is over on the left. Still, is still there when this picture was taken. And there it is. And this is truly one of the saddest gray pictures I have. Um, what I'm working up to is, I might as well tell you, everybody else seems to know it anyway. Um, I was at work, at work next door, Historical Society, 
uh, one morning, and what year was that? 1986. I was over there minding my own business, doing whatever it was I did in the morning, and somebody came in or called and said, the depot is coming down. So I went into a tailspin. I, there must have been somebody else in the building at the time. I'm not sure who it would have been. I jumped in the car and I tore down 4th Avenue with my camera, which I had, happened to have with me. And <clears throat> I'd been told that George Agle was, was down there knocking the building down. And sure enough, I reared into the back uh, the entrance off 4th Avenue on, on the uh, east side of the building, and there was George in this huge backhoe, about half as big as this room, and pointing, he was, let's see, he had his back to the river, and he'd worked his way through about two-thirds of the depot by the time I got there. It was just a pile of rubble, and within a half hour, I didn't hang around too long, I'm sure the rest of the building came down. Well, it wasn't George's fault, he was hired to do it. But the sad thing is that for months, years in fact, probably five or six, maybe longer, there have been attempts made to purchase that building so that it could be saved and restored. Numerous attempts were made. I used to call uh, uh, Philadelphia, I guess, every once in a while, and I, I mean, call the railroad. Every time I called, the next thing that would be announced was that the price had gone up. And I think the first offer made on the building was about $15,000, which was probably all, certainly all it was worth, if that, as a, as a wreck, a near wreck. Um, but nothing ever happened. Nobody could ever get through to the railroad. And it was a very, very sad story. So finally, uh, the, rather than sell it, the railroad hired George to come over there with his backhoe and knock it down. So I jumped out of the car. I'm so sorry about that digression. I, I, I just tore in there and I jumped out of the car and started waving my arms at George and he stopped doing what he was doing. The bucket was way up in the air. And I said, George, I've got to get a couple pieces of this building. Will you hold up until I can do that? And he did. And I came away with a couple of nice sillstones from the, uh, probably from the uh, east side of the building. They're work stones. Faces are work. The lowest level of stone on the building, below the brick, brick layers. Anyway, that's enough about that. But, but that's about the way it felt. Those are really awful pictures, aren't they? but they are representative. This turned up in some kind of an ad. I'm not sure I even know now what it was for. A uh, magazine ad. And that's our depot. I thought that was a friendly nod to depot history. Might have been. How about that car? I knew I'd do that. This this is Colonel Pendleton's private railroad car, by the way. Uh, Colonel Pendleton was the father, I think I have this right, of Helen Pendleton Rockwell. Uh, what was her husband's name? Bert, not Bert. One of those old Rockwells from Warren. I'm hearing noises out there, but I don't hear it clear. <laughs> anyway. A private car was not an unusual thing back in the early days. Lots of people who had money traveled with those and time on anywhere they wanted to and travel around the country. There was a lot of going back and forth to Philadelphia, of course, in the old days. And the, the train, even when it was still running in the 50s and early 60s, I guess, passenger train split at, at um, now I've forgotten where, where the split occurred, and you could go, you, I used to ride to Philadelphia, and you could, uh, and then they had cars that were split off to go to Baltimore and to New York, coaches and pulling cars. Oh my! 
This looks like the Pennsylvania Railroad Freight Station. Anybody remember that? It was right down here in the West End. Uh, Bill, we figured out well, it, was just, it was just east of the turntable, wasn't it? Yes. It was in the yards, right in the middle of the yard. Huge building, huge. That's not even... Okay. But it's gone, of course. <clears throat> Long gone. That was removed in... in um... You still there? Yes. You're very patient. I, normally, I, I didn't think to ask about... Uh, there, it's, right over, it's right over there, the, the uh, lectern. I should have used that. I wouldn't have to. I can't see anything. Um, 1970s. It was raised in 1981. The, the now, does anybody recognize this station? Struthers. Struthers Station, foot of Carver Street in Warren. Who said that? I, I thought so. <laughs> this is the Struthers Station, and it was unlike any of the others in, in Warren County. Again, it was a, a different, pleasant, very architecturally sound building somewhat different from from all of the others and a very active place too this is 1946 and here we are uh, about 1950 still the Struthers and in 1968 Sherwood Mead photographed it and that's a that's not a good picture but Again, it's, it's just disappearing. They, these pictures seem to me to be evidence of the sliding away of, the, of these stations. They, they're off into the ether somewhere, pulled away from us. So maybe Pat Ferry did the right thing when he knocked that Russell Depot down and hauled some of that lumber up there and built a nice chicken coop. I'll bet it's still there. This is Irvin. Sometime in the probably mid 1870s. By the way, Irvin was called Irvington originally. I didn't think to mention that. This is the IRV Tower in about 1960. I think those. That track work is still there, isn't it, all of it? I don't know. 1976. Now, the sad thing about this building, and I'm not telling stories out of school, what we, we started asking about this right away when we found out that the Forge was going to build a, an office building. That was before the present owners bought the company. And they said, oh, the building's okay. It's, it's not in the way of anything. We're, we're, our building is, we're going to put our building. Well, they knocked it down anyway. And they built a new office building. You know what I'm talking about? This modern, really nasty looking office. And I'm sorry, I apologize if I'm, offend, I'm offending anybody, but it's really not a pretty building. It was, it, 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 they could have left the depot. They did not build that building. On the, on, they didn't tear the depot down and build that, this thing on the site. They built it next, next to the site of the depot. So we might have still had a, a preserved one down there, but we don't. I get kind of worked up when I get into this. I, I don't want to offend anybody, but after all, this is our, this is our history. This is our past. And, and there has never been a... a for my money, uh, an architectural range of the kind that there has been in depots ever for any other kind of building in this country. Maybe, maybe anywhere. And that's from the very modest phones to the big city terminals. What in the world is this? <laughs> I don't even remember. What. Oh, is there a building in there? Oh, I see now. Come on. Feedback. That's the Youngsville. Somewhere there. Let's um, 
You see, it's been a while since I've done this talk. You're very patient. It's a good thing. I think I know most of you. <laughs> I know I'm among friends. I do, don't, don't shoot the piano player. He's doing the best he can. <laughs> I've just kind of got off the track here. Oh yeah, that was Youngsville. <clears throat> Some, somewhere along the line, after the Youngsville Depot came down, uh, this little building, which may have been there at the time, became the recipient of the station sign. And I took this picture, no, Sherwood Mead took this picture sometime probably in the mid-60s. But that is, in fact, one, if not the only, original station sign from Youngsville. So some humorist removed it, saved it, and put it up on that building. Okay, Pittsfield, another one somewhat different from the others. Notice the hip roof keeps showing its face every once in a while, and they're very nice buildings. Pittsfield, isn't that sad? It's a very lonely feeling. Garland. Garland from the other direction. Probably 1918. There's a line crew in the 60s just hanging out at the depot at Garland. Now this, this is uh, uh, difficult, but this is Spring Creek, and here's the station right here. Nice little building, very small, conventional looking, but uh, definitely a depot look. There it is. Now what could be nicer? Just a straightforward building with a few little embellishments that mark it as a depot. Perfect. Knock them down, carry them away. Okay. Uh, are you all still with me? Yeah. We're, um, we're into a, the uh, and other department now. So this is really an interesting mix of things. This, this is another gloomy picture. Both depots in Sheffield, of course, both still standing. Tynesta Valley and the P&E. Here's the Youngsville Sugar Grove Railroad, John Day's Dinky at Youngsville. How many of you know about that, have heard about it, the John Day's Dinky? Quite a few of you. <clears throat> it was a, obviously a very short line that ran between those two communities. Uh, I, I used to remember something about the Either the cars or the locomotives came off New York City elevated, elevated railway. Was it? See, it pays to have experts in the crowd. Was it the locomotives or the coaches? Locomotives. locomotives. <clears throat> Thank you. I was bailed out. Boy, it helps. That must have been quite a ride. <coughs> Oh, this is, yeah, there we are. That's why this picture is here. This is, this is an artist's rendering of the New York Elevated Railway, and there's one of those locomotives. I guess, now that I think about it, dinky was a term that was used to characterize a number of small, short-line railroads in this country over the years, especially in the previous century. Um, where the heck is the building? Oh, here. Can you make out this garage building? <clears throat> it's not very easy to see, but um, this is up on Brown Hill. I, and again, I don't know whether this is still there, but this is one of those dinky coaches that was taken apart and the lumber was used to build a garage on Brown Hill. Now this picture, I took this and 76, my gosh, that's a long time ago. 
So I don't know whether it's, I, I haven't gone off and looked for it. I hope it's still there. Now we're going to Kinzu. Another nice building. This, I think this is a particularly nice feature. This decoration in the overhang on the ends. Just plain pretty. Where are we now? To the Ute, I think. Yep. 1899. This depot was raised in 1970. Here it is in 1966. Do you, do you see what I mean by getting a feeling for what's happened? <laughs> the, thing, the trouble is now, well, we wouldn't want to go out and look at these buildings today because there wouldn't be anything left of them. So maybe it's just as well that they were removed when they were. But still, it's very, very difficult to look at a picture like that and not feel bad about it. Because that is a magnificent building compared to some of today's houses, for example. <laughs> or not. Maybe we don't want to do that. Lotsville, post-depot days, old boxcar, 1948. Bear Lake, about 1909. Everybody had a depot. Now, now we're going to make an abrupt change and dissolve into nothing <laughs> with some pictures that I used to take right out here. I'd, I'd, as soon as I could hear the train coming, I'd run out of my office with the camera and to the front porch of the Historic Society building and take photographs of what was coming through. And this is the end of the Penn Central period and, of course, the beginning of Conrail. So these dates range from May of 1956. You know, people didn't mind stopping to let the train come through the intersection. And now if you take your life in your hands just to get on the highway and drive when there's no trains around. I, I, I had to make three trips to Warren today from North Warren. I might as well get this in. Two of those trips, I was passed by everybody in sight coming into town. And there's supposed to be uh, uh, police watch going on right now. I don't know whether it's all over with, but boy, they can make a killing up in Venture Town <laughs> before somebody is killed. Sorry about that. We need these trains. Um, let's see. Uh, this was this was an Erie Lackawanna mo uh, locomotive, 1976. There's a um, Bangor and Roostook locomotive in 1977. Remember, this is the remains of the old DAV crossing Market Street and coming down forth, heading west. This is a, oh, this is the Bangor, oh, I beg your pardon, I jumped the gun. This is the Bangor, 1977, April. I wonder if it'll be dry like that. And let's see. And April's coming, isn't it? I don't have much hope for the weather. Here's Conrail. Oh, sorry about that. I'd forgotten there was a snow scene. This is 1978. That's number 3112, Conrail. And finally, this is number 3651 in April of 1979. Right out our front door. And that's the end. Clarendon. But I want to I relate, you said that was a glorious picture. 
I want to relate personal experiences that I had living in Starbrick, growing up along the uh, Pennsylvania and New York Central Railroads. I think they run parallel there in Starbrick. Yes, right? they do. Uh, I moved to that village in 1945, right after the war. And I became, the house faced the river, but the back of the house faced the railroad. And the railroad was probably about 300 yards away from the back of the house. Immediately, I became aware of the ore trains, the iron ore trains that ran through Warren up the Kinzu grade. The Kinzu grade started, I think, just west of the village of Starbrook. And it was a 10 mile run to get over that grade. And in order to bring that load of iron ore up over that grade, there were two huge engines pulling and two huge engines pushing. pushing steam. Full steam. It was an unbelievable, I mean, I got used to it. You know, I, that's just part of where I live. I never really gave it much thought after a while. But now you bring to mind the uniqueness of these, these engines running on, on these railroads. And I now remember what it felt like to see that that thing take place. And many times you could hear you could hear that assemble of assembly of engines and, and cars coming up the grade and they'd be heading towards Warren and they'd go out of earshot. And then maybe a half hour later they would back down because they didn't make the grade. And they go all the way out, 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 of, out of hearing again. Probably I don't know how far down west they started and they'd make another run for it. And it was really something to see those huge engines, full steam, I mean the smoke and the sparks and the steam. Oh. Unbelievable, unbelievable, now that I'm thinking about it. And I've never, I've never even, I've never seen a film of that. I'm sure one exists, but oh, it was, if anybody has a piece of film like that, I'd love to see that because it was really, as a boy, and I think even as a young man, it would be really something to see that again. Mm. Thank you. you know, Thank you. I think I think the railroad tracks that you're talking about are in parallel. I don't know what they were. One was a Pensy, but the New York Central was exactly in front of the New State Police Barracks. Mm -hmm. Yes. But there was two tracks in behind the State Police Barracks too. In fact, I think there might have even been three three lines at one time. Yeah, there were three started. lines there. The yeah. New New York Central, because my deed when I bought the property down there, the old Lily Pond House, yeah. the deed shows the New York Central right in front of the yeah. New State Police Barracks, and it went around, took a bend like this, and six went down. Route six went down two lanes when I was a kid. And you had to make a left turn and cut over the railroad tracks and make a right yeah. turn. Because when I bought the house, Hazel Jones owned the house, and these guys, and when they get their pay at the end of the week, they come down there and they wouldn't make the turn to go right. <laughs> <laughs> they had a lot of accidents there. Well, I'm sure most of you have a story, and if we continue to tell stories, we'd be here for several days probably. And that's the only sad thing about having to end something like this. But we do have to get out of the building. And I've managed to keep my talk to less than an hour, which is unusual for me. Um, pretty good at talking when I get on to something I'm interested in. But I, I just want to tell you again how, how much I appreciate you all having come out on a really, really still nasty night. Uh, it's reassuring to know that so many people are interested really important piece of our architecture <coughs> past. Not to mention our business and well-being and welfare. I think that we've done a terrible disservice to the railroads by allowing them to decline, especially the passenger railroads. I, well, I can't say it's any worse than it, the, both, both sides of the issue are bad. We need those railroads back. We need to get these trucks off the road. We need, we need boats. We could use that upper Allegheny improvement now. Cobalt mm -hmm. traffic is declining on the Mississippi River. No water. No water. And that tells you another story. So we go from one one piece of bad news into another. It, it, they're all related. Uh, 
of course, it's, 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 it destroys living in the past anyway. <laughs> Warren is blessed with a large number of very, very interesting people in the county. And I think that's a very good thing. And it's proven tonight. Thank you all very, very much. Jason, one, I have a website. It's uh, 